I thought I was done for the day, but then a good commentator, Mr. Moon Silver, commented that Microsoft has dropped graph rag. I thought I already had covered this graph rag a couple of times on my channel. One was four months ago, and then the another was one month ago. But it seems that this time Microsoft has also open sourced the source code and has also given us some of the tooling to actually run it and see how it works. So no rest for the wicked and how could I resist? So here I am with a new video on GraphRag. So we are going to install this GraphRag locally and then we will also check it out with our own custom data. Before I show you how to get it installed and work with your own data, let me give you a quick overview as what exactly this GraphRag is. So this GraphRag project from Microsoft is a data pipeline and transformation suite that is designed to extract meaningful structured data from unstructured text using the power of LLMs. And when we say power of LLMs here, it means that OpenAI is a GPT-4 models. I don't think so. There is any option of running it with Olama, but I will search it more. And if I would find any where we could run it with Olama or any local models, I would definitely create another video. But for this video, we will just focus on OpenAI's models. And so that means that you would need to go to platform.openai.com and grab your OpenAI's API key, which is a paid option, unfortunately. Now, coming back to this graph rag, as I said, it is a structured hierarchical approach to rag as opposed to naive semantic search approaches using plain text snippet. So just think about it for a moment. What exactly rag is or retrieval augmented generation is. So if you want to give large language models the context around your own data from your own domain, you need to use rag. So what you do is you take your own data. For example, you have a text file. You chunk it, which means that you distribute it into smaller pieces. Then it is converted into numerical representation, which is called as vector or embedding. Then those vector and embeddings are stored into a vector database. We create an index on it. And when some user asks the question from LLM about your own data, you take that question, you convert it into numerical representation, you search it in the vector index and similar similar search results are returned. Both the user's query and these similar search results are combined together, augmented together, and then they are given to LLM. So LLM uses its own intelligence plus your own context with user's query and returns you more grounded and informed result. So that is what RAG is. So what is the difference between graph rag and baseline rag then? So rag is a technique to improve LLM output using real world information, as I just mentioned. This technique is an important part of most LLM based tools and the majority of rag approaches we use every day. Microsoft calls it baseline rag, whereas graph rag uses knowledge graphs to provide substantial improvement in question and answer performance when reasoning about complex information. Idea is the same, concept is the same, but instead of storing it in a vanilla way, it just uses graphs to store the information. RAG technology, RAG technique have shown promise in helping LLMs to reason about private data sets, data that the LLM is not trained on and has never seen before. So the problem with baseline drag is that it cannot, it can find the similar searches, but even if it find the similar uh, data in the index, it more often than not, it is not able to understand the semantic relation between those data. Because, for example, in the graph, what happens is that if there are two nodes in the graph, in the graph, we define the relationship between those two nodes with the connection. So, and that is not present in baseline drag. So, when we represent this semantic relationship in a DAG or in a graph, then that is called as graph rag. So, behind the scene, what happens is graph rag builds. Um, uh, First, it slices up an input data into series of text or chunks. And then from there, it extracts all the entities and their relationship 
and then also the key claims and then it performs a hierarchical clustering of the graph using the Leiden technique you can also just consider it that for example if you have parent and you have children in the graph this graph rag would represent them as a node and relationship so it goes into the data extracts the data picks out the entities and the relationship and builds a whole graph around it so when a user searches for something not only it returns the similar result but it also returns the semantic result and the relationship between them that makes it more realistic that makes it more grounded and that is what graph rag is okay now that is done and clear now so let's go and get it installed on our local system and then see how this thing works and before i do that let me give a huge shout out to our good friends at mast compute who are sponsoring the gpu and vm for this video if you're looking to rent a gpu on affordable prices i will drop the link to their website and a coupon code of 50 percent discount on a range of gpus so let me take you to that vm and then also let me show you the gpu which is nvidia rtx a6000 and of course you don't need that much gpu because we will be using open as api key let me clear the screen as usual i'm just going to create a conda environment to create a separate virtual environment where everything will be separate from my local system let's wait for it to get installed shouldn't take too long now that is done let me clear the screen next up set your open as api key just put in your api key within these double quotes and then let me do that and clear the screen so i have set my key and now let's install graph rag the installation is very simple pip install graph rag let's wait for it to finish shouldn't take too long and by the way you can not only use it with open ai but also if you are a azure cloud user you can use with that one too and if by the way if you go through the microsoft's documentation they are trying their best level to <laughs> entice you towards azure but anyway we'll just do it with open ai in this video shouldn't take too long now it's almost there that is eventually done took fair bit of time by the way okay so graph rag is installed let's provide its our own data i'm just going to create this rag test directory and input and then i'm seeding to that directory that's done let's create a text file and you can use your own data here i'm just going to create a file for hug.txt and i am going to put my some of the personal information here so let me just paste it and then we'll do a rag with it so that is done let me save it so it just contains my information that what i do where i live and all that my blog my youtube channel and all that stuff some of the linkedin information so let me save it that is done so we have our file now which we can use for the rag purposes okay now once you have your custom data and once you have installed the rag then next step you need to do is to set up a data project with some initial configuration and for that you need to uh, initialize your uh, working directory or workspace let me actually get to the root of it here now it is much better so now when i will run this python 3-m i'm using this index uh, so th what this is doing it this is just uh, initializing my workspace and then it is going to create two files dot env and settings.yml in the rag text test directory so let me run it it is going to first time it is going to take a bit of a time so let's wait for it to finish so it has initialized my project now if we go into the directory rag test and if i do ls a you will see that there is dot env file and settings.yml among other stuff i'm just going to go into this v dot env file and here you just need to put in your open ai's api key again now i have tried it by setting environment variable it works but just for the sake of uh, completion i will also go going to put my key here 
I will save the file and get out of here. So I have saved my key there and another file you don't need to change in this settings.yaml file but just to show you. So this is all the pipeline settings. There are a lot of stuff here which you can check out which model you are using. So it is using GPT-4 Turbo and then this is a parallelization async mode. A lot of stuff is there and there is a huge documentation which you can test like chunk home, chunking as I mentioned earlier when you give it a file. It chunks it into different smaller pieces where the input is and then what cache it is going to use, storage, artifact is when, when it finishes it creates out of artifacts out of it in parquet format and then there is some reporting where it puts in the reports or logs and then summarization also uh, some of the global LLM setting with claim extraction and then reporting if you want the report and then how many cluster of graphs you want default is fine embedding if you will make it true it is going to generate node to work embedding for nodes but that is fine and then there is few other stuff as i mentioned there are a lot of stuff there now one interesting concept here is local search and global search and i'm also going to show you and then i will uh, describe the difference between these two because that is one of the most important uh, characteristic or concept in the graph rack anyway so let's get out of this file without saving let me clear the screen let me go one step back let's clear again and then in order to build the graph index with the help of graph rag we need to use this command so this is going to read our input file which is path.txt it is going to chunk it it is going to convert it into numerical representation and then it will convert it into a graph with all the entities and their relationship as we saw earlier so let's run it let's wait for it to come back it it is going to take a bit of time not much it is already working i have very it's a very small file it didn't take too much it's already 50 percent done then you can see that for such a small file it is taking that much time so the more data you would have the more time it is going to take let's wait for it to finish shouldn't take too long and you see already Fahad Mirza, Sydney, Fahad Mirza in sync to that is a conference where I spoke some time back so it is extracting the entities and then it is building the relationships and then also generating the report of it so everything is done and dusted which is awesome now if you go into this rag test directory again and go to outputs and if i do ls there is a time bound stuff so if i go to anyone okay so it is so if i do ls dash ltr these are the directories let me go into this directory and then if i do ls then cd reports ls there is a log which i wanted to show you so this is an indexing engine log it doesn't contain any because I have very, very small data here. And if you go into the second directory, it also has reports and artifacts. And these are the artifacts where it stores the data relationship and everything as the parquet file. There you go. So these are all the parquet files which I was talking about containing entities, communities and all the stuff which it pulls out um, from my data. So if you check the stats.json it is telling me what exactly it did there it is awesome for troubleshooting and actually knowing your data and how many chunks it created and then how many units it used entities and all that stuff so it's a really really uh, gold mine of data here to understand your data more so i wish i could you know uh, spend more time on it but i think that is going to bore you but rest assured your data it just slices and dices it from every angle okay so let's go back to my home directory and then we are going to actually sorry uh, run it properly with the rag index okay, so let me clear the screen and now we are going to run the inference on it so i'm in the home directory again i'm just using graph rag dot query dash dash root and then rag test method is global it could be local too and i will shortly describe what is meant by it so i'm simply asking it who is Fahad Mirza 
and I'm using global method so once I run it let's wait for it to come back so it is reading the uh, it is reading the settings and then it is using the API key and it is going to return us the result and it is going to take a bit of a time because it is a global search there you go you see such a fine response it is look at this uh, Mirza's choice to use Sydney as both his living and operational base underscore the city's importance in his personal and professional life it suggests that Sydney not only offers a conducive environment for his lifestyle but serves okay so if you remember this is not what I had written in my own text file so model has what model has done is it's it has produced a global response now similarly if i use the local response so same query but instead of a method global i have given it local so let me run the local one and then i will tell you what is the difference between the two methods because that is really one of the best feature of this there you go so it has almost done almost there it is creating the LLM client with that API call. Let's wait for it to come back. And there you go. So this time the response is not as big, but it has more geared towards the file which I provided. So this is a data source which it used. And then it has provided me because I had asked it who is Fahad Pirza and then where does he live? So there were two questions. So it has given two answers and both of them are short and sweet and terse and mainly they are grounded in my file which i provided but if you go back to the previous answer it is very very broad very verbose and it has produced a lot of other information uh, which was other than my own uh, provided file so what is happening here the difference between local search and global search is that local search method generate answers by combining relevant data from the knowledge graph with text text chunk of my own raw document so whereas global search method generates answer by searching overall ai generated community reports in a map reduced fashion so not only it uses my own data but also it goes to the internet builds a map reduced fashion map reduce uh, data from the global search of internet from wikipedia github linkedin wherever it could found or into the information provided uh, in the training set of the model itself so when to use when you should use local search when because it is suitable for questions that require an understanding of specific entities mentioned in your own document and you don't want anything else but if you want a broader answer good response that requires an understanding of data set as a whole and for example what you know you see not only it is, it is telling me who is Fahad Mirza, it is also talking about why Fahad Mirza selected Sydney as both his living and operational base. Even I didn't know that. I I mean, it that it's a, a strategic location and all that stuff. Anyway, so this it has taken from globally from internet. So this is a difference between local and global search. So you can imagine that how easy it is to build a rag pipeline with the help of graph rag which is more grounded which recognizes the entities more and their relationship more and that gives a true semantic relationship a semantic meaning to your own data so all in all um, amazing project by microsoft and really good of them to share it with us so that we could use it with open ai and how good it would be if we would be able to use it with local llms that will be amazing and awesome but anyway so that's it guys i hope that you enjoyed it maybe we'll have something like open graph rag very soon who knows but let's see if you like the content please do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and if you're already subscribed then please share it among your network as it helps a lot thanks for watching